another thing too. They don't want to see the other side of love either. You know what I'm saying? They don't want that discipline. Nope. Because we live in a world where everybody wants to be right, nobody wants to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't think the way I think, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Or in some black folks case, if you ain't doing this, you're not black and you're cool. <laughs> and that's how some people think, man. Which leads me to Steve Harvey. And, and other artists that met up with Donald Trump. Anybody, any <laughs> black folk that mess with Donald Trump <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting called a sellout, a cone of uh, uh, anti-black. And, and all I'm at, all I'm saying is these dudes just having one meeting with them and all of a sudden getting labels all of a sudden. Like, I don't want to be on no pro-black nonsense, but I do have a little issue with our brothers and sisters in the comedic community. Because uh, y'all y'all want to go hard on trying to prove that Jesus Christ is a plagiarized character and not an actual human being. Like, me personally? Man, let me, let me get to that later. Let's stick to what's up. Uh, Steve Harvey. Who I, re who I look up to not only as one of the best comedians in the game, debatable, but also a well, a, a, a real life, a real life, true example of what a man can be once he get up after falling a couple of times. Uh, he's a he not only he got uh, TV shows and hosting Family Feud, one of the long, one of the longest family theme game show ever but he got his own radio show and he also doing uh, men mentorship programs for young men and women he does he gets go to a meeting with Donald Trump the new president after after being after it was right chances of things here's the thing the folks don't even want to acknowledge it he was recommended to go to this meeting by President Barack Obama. But nobody want to say nothing to say nothing to Barack Obama because you know Barack Obama, he's the man. But Steve Harvey going to a meeting with Donald Trump, no matter what the reason is, all of a sudden he's just cool. And I don't think folks, no, I don't think anybody in the black community truly understand the definition of that word. Just like they don't understand the true definition of the word hypocrite. But yet. One thing I can't stand about black black folks that be on that pro-black nonsense is that they'll throw the title on anybody just just because. It's like, oh, you don't like cheese on your grits? Cone. You don't like fried chicken? Cone. What? You don't like talk? You like country music? Get your white white self on somewhere trying to be white. It's like we'll throw a label on anybody just for being the total opposite of what they don't understand. So my question is, why do we do this? Why do we why do we encourage black folks to be successful and when they do be successful or be too successful? It's a problem. I think the answer would that be um deep down inside some black folks still want segregation. Again. Segregation. We want to be separated from everything else because of the fact that we want to be, for lack of a better term, treated differently. We want our own, you know, say like, for example, businesses and stuff like that. And black folks get the idea that if with other, not just white folks, but Mexicans or whatever, then we're not contributing or building up what we supposed to build up on our end. But the thing is, you're not going to build nothing if you keep insulting people or blaming people for trying different things. And second of all, in order to create wealth, we gotta do more than just do it with our people. 
we got business with them anyway. I mean, China. Because everybody knows black people are the number one consumer. True. So why, so why do you think them Arabs and Chinese people plant restaurants and liquor stores in our hood? Because they know we're going to buy them. We're going to buy that Grey Goose. We're going to buy that cra Crab Reef. We're going to buy that wheat. Ain't going to take that money and ship it half across the world to their family so one of their kids can go to college. In America. Right. <sighs> Would your dogs faster? I think that we're a selfish people. Ooh, man, you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that all of us have some kind of selfishness in us and because of that, you know, it, 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 we, we made it become all about us. It's about me. It's about I, 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 I. You know, I want this, I want that, and I want it when I want it. You know, and when I see somebody else get it and, it, and I didn't get it, you know, now I have a problem because that what you got, I was supposed to have. And so, uh, and, and, and what that has done is it, it, it's carried on from generation to generation and we've just become a bunch of selfish people. And it, we made it become about us, about what we think about. I mean, you can look around, all around you, and you see that same pattern taking place. You see all, all, all these things that's going on, and you see all this hatred that's in the world today, it all stems off of that I. That whole I mentality. Let's take a close look at it, and you'll see. And you'll realize that wow, we are we are, we are some selfish people. Instead of instead of instead of practicing love, and, you know, being proud for our brother, you know, uh, lifting our brother up. We just watched a, a short film earlier about humility and being humble. You know, put, put placing people before, placing others before us. You know, and helping them out and who's ever else in need. You know, helping that person out. You know, how many? Let me let me ask you this question: Would you help someone out that you do not know? Would you, uh, 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 let's say you only had a dollar, okay, and, and you could purchase a cheeseburger. Let's say you purchase a cheeseburger for a dollar, and, and you only had this dollar, and you were with this one person that you didn't even know, you just so happened to be standing next to them or whatever. They were home to you. You had a there was a cheeseburger on sale. You can buy that cheeseburger for a dollar. Would you buy that cheeseburger for that individual, or would you buy it for yourself? Now, be honest with me. You hungry? You ain't ate all day, and that cheeseburger is smelling good. It's looking good, and, and your mouth is watering. But you got this person. You don't even know. You don't know a name or nothing. All you heard is they're standing right by you, and they're saying, "I'm so hungry. I haven't." Willing to buy that person that you remember when you buy them. Be honest with me. Let's, let's just be <laughs> honest. Now, it sounds good to say, oh, well, I will go ahead and buy that cheeseburger for that other individual. Yeah, it will sound good. That sounds yeah. good. No, it sounds good. But if you be honest with me, would you buy that cheeseburger for yourself or for that other individual? Self. <laughs> I don't do is buy it because you have. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, All right. Yeah, that sounds better than I'm by that person in the burger. I ain't gonna lie. I'm selfish. You see that? I ain't gonna lie, man. Because I know if I'm hungry and the next person is hungry, I can't think about nobody but myself. <laughs> but I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So, like I always say, I'm a student of life for life. So I'm still learning how to be humble, still learning how to be patient, still learning how to be better, still learning how to be perfect. Even though folks be like, oh, ain't nobody perfect, ain't nobody perfect. I'm like, speak for yourself. There's a clock, there's a there's an opportunity for me to be perfect, and in Christ I am perfect, and he wants me to be perfect. So guess what I'm gonna be? What does that word say? Greater is he that is in you than he who is in all the world. Mm. And if he is in you. And whoever's in, if he that is in you is perfect. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> See? So you can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. <laughs> All things are possible. But uh But how do y'all feel about this 
whole situation with Trump. Even though this man, is, this has only been day one of him being in the inauguration. He's, he's already folks protesting and doing some silly stuff. And why do I mean silly stuff? I'm talking about trying to protest everything. This man ain't been president yet and already people have problems. An issue with this man. How do y'all feel about these? How how do y'all feel about people showing their gra showing showing gratitude towards this man who have yet to get start off on the job? I say this. First of all, people, Donald Trump is one man. One. And there's like 300 million people lashing out at him particular reason other than they want attention and they can't do nothing about it for the next four years so let me get that out there secondly the, re the main reason why people are attacking Trump is because of his past if you look at all the old videos from the 90s and 80s his track record is not that clean he come at as this misogynistic racist bigot and people think to this day he still acts like that I'm not saying that he ain't got something left in him but me personally I don't know the man never met him personally so I can't say that he's a racist bigot you know what I'm saying people are just going off his past how he ran his business how he runs a TV show and how he even how he ran his political campaign, which but, was which was so beautiful. This man put every dollar out of his own pocket to run his own campaign. And I told my boss, and he was talking about running for president. I'm like, you should thank Donald Trump. He's now made it possible for anybody to qualify for that job. Because usually you have to be a, you have to have some you know some some years of politics in on in, under your belt to become president oh, this dude ain't even know he he had no political uh longevity no sovereignty all that stuff under his belt and he became and all of a sudden he became president of the united states so this country is still a land of opportunities <laughs> that's the way to look at it huh? that's the way to look at it <laughs> And my, also my thing is people are putting way too much energy into destroying this man. Which that could have been time to get do something productive. Amen. I think that we go about doing things the wrong way. I don't I don't think riots are, 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 is the answer to anything. You know, um, anytime you you you're destroying something. It, it, it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's really not going to solve a problem. Actually, you're making the problem worse because now you, you, you're having to uh, uh, build up this city again that you just tore apart. You know, and it's coming out of our tax dollars and all this stuff. We're trying to get all this stuff rebuilt and all this stuff. And so, I don't think that riots or any of that stuff is the answer to anything. If anything, people are acting or reacting off of their anger. You know, um, uh, what does the Bible say about anger? It says, uh, uh, um, say, be angry and sin not. Hey, thank you. It says to be angry and sin not. Well, what are we doing? We're being angry and, and sin. <laughs> and and we're acting off of it. Yeah. You know, and we're, and we're just, just destroying everything, just tearing up stuff. And then at the end, what happens? What is it solved? So why do we keep doing it? That's a real good question because it seemed like the it's like didn't folks didn't pay attention <laughs> two three years ago when, we, when black folks were rioting for because of what happened to Mike Brown and Eric Garner it's like these folks ain't paid attention yet it don't help it never helped but as human beings yeah. we like this we like that we want to we want to go for that fruit that's what we do we go for the fruit we know that fruit is bad for us. I mean that fruit, I'm talking about the one from the tree of knowledge, good and evil. We still want, we still want that fruit. Even though we've been told it ain't good. Well, I went for the tree, 
knowledge of good and evil was he told if you eat of the people from this tree you will surely die so in this case if you continue to write all you're going to be doing is violating and violating and vandalizing cities towns this that and the third and the best thing these folks can do is more riots are you telling me you're telling me not even a simple conversation with even your local polit uh, politician exactly. ain't good enough for you. Like this is a president. Like people keep forgetting the whole voting process. When it comes to president, they get points per state. The whole electoral vote, those are all like points per points of state. Like do you do some Google research on the whole electoral vote? Even if you gotta go through the whole of a person type of thing. Google that. One thing about the soapbox is that we do recommend our people to study and show yourself approved. Not just in the Bible, but do your history research as well. But you have the power to vote for your mayor, your alderman, your coroner, coroner, uh, governor, all them, everybody else. But president. It's all about the electoral votes. Okay? So keep this in mind. The next time we get the next electoral uh next voting process is four years from now. Or three years if you count it accurately. But uh this is what happened when folks they are depending on the whole see this one got Hillary in trouble. Because all she was getting is popularity votes. That's all she was getting. People was just loving her only because and only because they did not like Trump. That's it. No matter how how much of her track record was not clean. But it was obvious a lot of people didn't vote, but those that did vote voted for Trump. Why? Because Trump was saying something that the people wanted to hear. And let's, oh yeah, let's 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 not forget that Hillary. Not only that Hillary has a bad, uh, dog doesn't have a clean record as well. But this goes back to our time when we did the politics uh, series. When all thing black folks wanted to do was vote Democrat. But truth be told, folks do their homework. They would have realized that maybe Hillary wasn't much of a good candidate either. It would have been better off with a uh, Bernie Sanders. Matter of fact, I would have said it too. I stand out to say it. We would have been better off with Ben Carson. We would have had another brother in the presidency so that we could continue on to go on and keep that mug on point. But no, not black folks. We don't want to vote for a black Republican. And this coming and this is a guy who was raised who was raised by a single mother who who was struggling just like just like some most of us who had to had to practically pay to go to college himself to become the doctor and all of a sudden he can't even get our vote because he's a Republican that's ridiculous and that's why I won't see much unity in the black community but that's just me and speaking of black community let's go back to this whole comedic situation like, it, like I say, you got some brothers and sisters in there trying to discredit Jesus Christ as a, not only as a person, a human being, but trying to make it seem like he was a plagiarism of this dude named Horace. Now, shout out to my girl, uh, my sister Toy, who's been throwing out these uh, history, uh, history notes comparing these two. Now, we had this talk before about the difference between Jesus and Horace. Like Horace is, like for instance, their birth. Jesus was born from a virgin known as Mary. Now we can have we can we can do, we can talk about how that how that situation is because it's in the Bible. But in but compared to Horace, his his birth counts from his father of uh, Osiris being killed and dismembered by his brother Seth and the wife of Osiris known as Isis was kind of trying to collect all his body parts because his stuff was being spread abroad even in the river and stuff like that 
uh, check, um, according to the story, the body piece, the body parts came together. But she only held on to one of them in order to get her pregnant. I'll let y'all figure out what that body part is. Yeah, Jesus has disciples. This dude, Horace, don't have disciples. He's got a few followers here and there, but no disciples. Uh, we now heard of, of Horace being crucified, or died, or resurrected, or even being betrayed by his own people. But yet Jesus' story, he betrayed by his own people, crucified, died, resurrected. Dying for our sins and rose from the rose again. We don't hear nothing about Horace, but yet this is the dude that these that our brothers and sisters in the comedic community is saying is where they got Jesus from. Like I got you on as far as what the Roman Empire did and and, and the Roman Catholic Church did as far as creating an image of Jesus to be a white dude with blind hair and blue eyes or maybe brown hair. And Hazel eyes, whatever the case may be. I understand the whole council of Nazi stuff, but if if all of y'all can do is stick to an ancient graffiti and the council of Nazi, please do not bring that argument towards somebody like him, or a brother like him, or a brother like Mr. Dan a little bit, or Big Seal, or anybody that reads the word and do their research as well. Because as far as I'm concerned, right now is this is. I, I consider this year as the year that we don't play games because y'all not playing with us. But that's just me. Anybody else got something to add in on the questions? He said no. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well, because truth be told, like when I was in the Stream Institute, a couple, of, a couple of dudes tried to challenge me trying to make it seem like I was well trying to make it seem like I didn't I don't know who I was before slavery as if I was in chains before like I was in a plantation before like I was in the field picking up cotton before like I didn't know who I, who I was but yet being one try to say I was contradicting myself for reading the Bible because kids believe what men think That, can somebody explain to me what does that got to do with me reading, like, believing in the Bible is the Word of God? Because if kids believe and men think, well, I'm a man and I think I know that this book is the true Word of God because I spent half of my life not only reading this mug but giving researches as well. And then folks, want, and then one dude trying to bring me Dr. Ray Hagen on me. Like first of all, this man is not even being he has no doesn't have respect for, from his own from his community that believe that Jesus is not a real dude. But yeah, you gonna throw a dude on me who uses the Bible to contradict the Bible. What that uh there's a scripture in, I think in Galatia where where uh Paul was using uh Sarah and Hagar as an example of free freedom and slavery. And there was a part where he, Paul said, this thing may be considered an allegory or something. This dude has an, have the audacity to use that particular scripture to make it seem like Paul was an allegory. Uh, no, not Paul. Abraham was his allegory. Moses is an allegory. Jacob, David, Solomon, all of them allegory because he, according to him, allegory means fake or trying to create or, or create something to prove a point. Maybe it's just me, but I think allegory means more than that. But yet he uses that particular scripture to say uh everybody is fake including Jesus. Might say Paul is real and those who they read the New Testament are and according to him Paulian. <laughs> those that are supposed to be Christian at that time they were Paulian so they were students of disciples of Paul. But according to Jesus, Jesus ain't real. There's no rapture. There's no second coming. None of this, none of that stuff happens. According to this doctor. But yet, my dude tried to bring that dude to me. Trying to say that, uh, he, he keep bringing up the whole 
because that's what a lot of these comedic folks do. And some of these Hebrew Israelites does the same thing too. And I do mean some, not all, some. Because a lot of folks want to be like, be all generalizing on everything. That's what got a lot of black folks in trouble. But uh, some of these cats be on that, uh, you know, don't you know that your ancestors didn't believe in Jesus Christ before they got in, before they got in the boat? My question is, what makes you think my people didn't, my ancestors didn't believe in Jesus before they got on that before they got on that boat? As far as I'm concerned, my people was doing fine until your people kidnapped them and sold them to the white man. Oh, oh but there was slavery in Africa. But they want to, they want to, they want to rom romance it, trying to make it seem like, oh, our slavery was different from America slavery. I'm like, no, <laughs> slavery is slavery. But yet. Y'all want to be cool with the black folks with slavery versus the white man's slavery. And then want to bring up the slave should have known as Jesus and all that crazy stuff. So I had, so question has to be asked. One of them was, name me, can you name me a, a African dynasty that took over a land outside of Africa? Silence. See, they don't, see, don't, one thing they want is some Christians that don't know anything. Not just any Christian that know the Bible, but any that just know nothing. So they can just drop these jewels on you. Like, you know that your Bible is a plagiarism of the uh, comedic uh, confession and confiscation and all that stuff like that. Don't you know that your people is the original people of Earth and this, that, and the third? That's like, don't you know? And if you do know it, why are you bothering me and not teaching me this stuff? But they ain't teaching. They trying to shut you down so that you can throw away your faith in Jesus Christ. And, and uh, also the Hebrew Israelite cat. Can y'all please stop using uh, Jeremiah 14 2 to make it seem like the original Jews was black? And please stop using Revelation 1 14 and 15 to describe Jesus. Because the last thing I want to do is, is go in these scriptures on y'all. And then y'all go ahead and call it call me a cone for not 100 percent supporting the the Hebrew Israelite doctrine that get folks in a lot of trouble. I believe a lot of times we focus on the wrong thing. Yeah. Is my being black or that person there being white or that person there uh, uh, being another color. Is that is that going to keep me from heaven or get me into heaven because of their color? And so when, I think that when we draw the color card and talk about, you know, well, oh, Jesus was black. Oh, no, Jesus was white. Oh, no, no, Jesus was this or whatever. That, that really doesn't matter as far as what color he is. Je Jesus, Jesus wants us to walk in this way obey his will in his way you know and just be obedient to his word and love one another that's what's gonna get us there it's not it's not about the color it's not about uh so much uh even even it's not even about so much of oh, where you came from you know you have a lot of these people that focus on oh, 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 oh well you know well you 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 you're you're originally hebrew or you're or i'm an israelite or all, all of this or whatever and you you don't know that that's not gonna keep you from getting into heaven so i think that we need to start focusing more on what god will have us to do more so than just it's good to know your history that's always good but that's not that's not what's gonna get you to heaven or keep you from getting there i mean you you have to focus on what god wants us to do that, that's the bottom line I think that a lot of times we just put, put too much focus on the wrong thing. And I think that's the word to say. I believe I really do. Uh, so can I can I can I take a Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Mr. Analytical? Uh nothing much you just said about me right there, but uh, the prime example of what you just said is the whole Serena and Alexis Mulana, where is that? People got uptight about that because the man was white. 
I mean, and this is coming from from people, from black dudes who probably got white men. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, my question is, are we going to stop supporting her as a tennis player because she's married to a white dude now? You know that's going to be a yes. <laughs> and the reason I say yes because truth be, truth be told, we're talking about brothers with discipline and the fact that a beautiful, beautiful chocolate woman is selling for a glass of milk. And this comes from them. They, they offended by this. It's like, but these dudes had the opportunity to stack their papers up and beat her at her level, but let's be real. She can on maybe maybe Serena had a chance of finding love from the likes of Common and Drake. But let's be real. Where did I just walk into? <laughs> Talk about Serena Williams. This is that prime example of being a successful black person and all of a sudden get labeled for something because you're doing something according to folks it's extremely different it's extremely different like Serena Williams being engaged to white dude. whether or not he's a millionaire whatsoever because chances are he probably is but her engaged to this dude is an insult to me Black men all over the world, for some reason, these brothers speak on you know, my behalf or something. Your behalf, or your behalf or something. Like, this we made this choice. Yeah, this is what we gotta deal with as, not only as black folks, but as human beings. What's, the, what's that sweet, what that commandment say? Thou shalt not covet? Brothers covet hard. Covet. <laughs> Men under construction. Make sure you get that uh, listen to that song, Three World Three Worldly Ways. You see what I'm talking about. But anywho, 